the hedge fund industry is one such industry where people come from literally any background and still make it to the top we have george soros who was raised in a german occupied hungary we have jim simmons who was a math wizard and a war code breaker well today i'm going to tell you about one such hedge fund legend who was beating down his opponents in the boxing rings way before he did the same in the financial markets we can pretty much say that this man has been brutal on us adversaries whenever and wherever he comes across them and this is what has made him one of the most successful hedge fund managers of all time but who is this man and how did he go from boxing to managing huge sums of money you will see that in this video hi this is dax from forex monopoly and in this episode of the legendary traders i'm going to talk about a pioneer of the modern day hedge fund industry and it is none other than paul tudor jones Paul was born in 1954 in Tennessee and he attended the University of Virginia where he graduated with a degree in economics. He paid for college by writing for his family owned paper the Daily News. Paul's life at university was pretty happening too. While he was attending classes of economics, he was also sweating it out in the boxing ring and he was the welterweight boxing champion during his time in the university. In the 1980s, Paul was accepted to the Harvard Business School but he did not attend. Maybe life had something else in store for him right out of the university paul asked a cousin of his to introduce him to trading so paul was then sent to one of the largest cotton broker of those times where he was mentored and groomed in cotton trading but you won't believe what happened to him there he was fired for sleeping at his desk as he was partying all night but this didn't stop him instead it gave him the motivation to keep going and stay dedicated that he went on to work at different firms in different roles and finally in 1980 he started his hedge fund tudor investment corporation a fund that is brainchild of pauls and it is reported that the firm currently manages around 17 billion us dollars the firm began trading cotton futures eventually they expanded into various other commodities and financial products now that paul was in money managing business he had to make trades right to actually generate money and we can say that he did actually take some smart trades that rewarded him big time and one such trade was in 1987 also known as black monday trade so what happened was that the us market was soaring high from 1982 and then in 1987 all of this came crashing down now there were many reasons that were being given for this the most obvious being that the prices were just going up and up for 5 years without any retracement and hence this crash was imminent some even said that the high interest rates and inflation around the corner did not sit well with the investors and they started panic selling but there was something else also that happened that was really interesting at that time when automated strategies weren't too popular there was one such strategy that was being used known as portfolio insurance this strategy was used to hedge a stock portfolio in the market by shorting index futures so that in case the price tanked the portfolio would have some protection but on the 19th of october 1987 these automated strategies began liquidating their positions as the stop loss were hit this led to price falling others started selling off too and this led to a domino effect due to which the price just kept going down and there was panic everywhere between all of this paul was just in the right place to make a fortune and he did just that Paul had predicted the 1987 crash as he had studied the 1927 market crash and observed lots of similarities. On the Friday just before the Black Monday, Paul saw that the prices fell and took it as an indication for action and started acting on his analysis. And guess what happened? The markets crashed on Monday, just like Paul predicted. Just look at this S&P 500 chart of that year. Look at how scary the crash looks and by the way, do you notice one thing? the 200 day moving average paul has said this many times that he uses the 200 day moving average a lot whenever he analyzes the prices he says that it gives him a good understanding of the price well wasn't he right if you look just as the price closed below the moving average it literally tanked and here comes the sweetest part paul and his firm profited around 100 million us dollars just from the single trade he hit another home run in 1990 when the japanese market crashed Well, before we move to that, if you are enjoying this video, then make sure you hit the like button, and also if you are new to the channel, then do not forget to subscribe to this channel. So, just before the Japanese markets crashed, Paul was ready for something like that to happen, and he shorted the Japanese markets. 
He observed that the high credit dependency of the Japanese economy, the Japanese government had flushed in a lot of money to push the growth of the country and people were building assets above assets based on lots of credit. Paul knew that this wasn't a sustainable economic model and waited for the right time to take action. Finally, in the year 1990, he shorted index futures heavily and 90% is what Paul earned for his investors from this trade. Nothing less than a home run, right? It was these home runs along with various other trades and investments that made him worth over 7 billion US dollars. And that's great, isn't it? You know what else would be great? If you could hit the like button below and also subscribe to the channel to get more such videos in your feed. As you saw, some of the biggest trades were when the markets crashed. This means that Paul was more of an contrarian and nothing less than an opportunist. What he believed was that big money is made when the markets turn. And this is where he would look to enter and write it all the way. Paul was also a believer of price. He actually once said that the price was more important to him than fundamentals. And this is what something that all technical traders believe in. But even though Paul had such an aggressive approach, he never went crazy and risked everything all at once. For him, risk was something that he always tried to limit. But he always wanted rewards to be multiple times of the risk that he took. And this is what we know as having a higher risk to reward. But you know what exactly made Paul stand out from all the other traders, investors or money managers? He doesn't mind making mistakes. But once he knew that he was wrong, he would cut out, change his bias and move forward. Apart from thriving in professional life, Paul has also been somewhat involved in politics. He also has a philanthropic side to him. He has donated millions of dollars to this cause and he is one behind the Robin Hood Foundation that is helping people all around the globe. He has a family of four kids with his wife whom he married in 1988. So this was Paul's life and it was quite interesting if you ask me. I really wanted to take some lessons from his life and career which I did and I'm going to share them with you. So the first lesson is always have a plan and know what you are doing. As you saw during this video, Paul here knew that the money was to be made when the markets turn. He always had a plan and the plan was to enter when the trend reverses and this is the first lesson that you can take. Always have a plan. Lesson number two is never become too arrogant or cocky. Traders that are arrogant and cocky will never be able to admit that they were wrong at times and losses won't be something they would be able to digest. Paul was not arrogant nor he was cocky. He knew that the markets were superior to him and that he had to play along the rules of the market. If he was wrong, he had no issues admitting it and adjusting to the market and neither did losses affect him. Lesson number three is play to live another day. This is not any James Bond movie title but it's an actual lesson that every trader must take. Never go all in in any given trade hoping to make huge killing. Risk enough so that even if you lose, you are still in the game and can come back the next day. But Paul also believes in having an asymmetric risk to reward ratio which means that if he risks $1 then he should earn at least $5. Well, you don't really need to have such a high risk to reward ratio and anything above 1 is to 1.5 is decent risk to reward ratio. So here it is, this was the life and career of the legendary trader Paul Tudor Jones. I hope that you actually learned a lot from this and if you feel that you have learned something valuable from this video then do give it a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you in the next video.